Hello everyone, welcome again. Well, in this video, we are going to discuss about following access view. So whenever we are dealing with the child of the current node, in that case, we are going to use the descendant access view. And whenever we are dealing with the node which are parallel to our current node, in that case, we are going to use the following access view. So when I say parallel, that means the node and the current node belongs to the same parent. For example, if I want to find the xpath of this button, first I will inspect this element. Okay, let us consider the second button because it has dynamically generated ID value. So in order to use the access view, first we need to find an element with the constant value for their attribute. That particular node will act as a reference node for us. So if I go up in the hierarchy, I have a div node with the constant value for the ID. So this particular node will act as a reference node for me. So the X path for this node, div at the rate ID equal to this. Now if I check for this X path, so as you can see here, it is able to select the div node. Now the button which we need to locate is present inside this particular div. So first we need to select the div which is parallel to our current node. So in that case I am going to use the following sibling. The following sibling keyword is going to select all the node which is parallel or at the same level to the current node. So when I say parallel or same level that means they belong to the same parent. So here if I want to select all the node parallel to the current node, I am going to use following sibling and I am going to use asterisk to select all the node which are at the same level. So if I check for this X path, so as you can see here it has selected both the div node which is parallel to the current node that is this. Now here also you can do the filtering based on the type of node. So I'm going to specify the div. So if I do the eval for this X path, so as you can see here it has selected both the div. Now if I want to select the second div, I can directly use the position function. So position equal to two. So it is going to select the second div. So this is the X path for the node, second node which is parallel to the current node. Now if I expand this, our input button is present inside this particular div node. And if I consider this entire X path, we can say that this is also a current node. In other words, I can use this entire X path to refer to the rest of the node. So as you can see here, this particular input is a grandchildren to our div. So I can here, sorry, here I can directly use the descendant access view for selection. So here I can directly use like this descendant asterisk. So now I'm going to consider this entire node as a current node and on the basis of that I'm going to calculate the X path for the other node. So as you can see here it has selected all the descendant to our current node which is this. So in order to apply the filter for input I will use the node of type input. Okay. So it has selected both the input grandchildren. And here I will specify the position of the input node which I want to select. So equal to 2. So as you can see here we are able to select the required element. Now the next thing is the following. So following is going to select all the node which is parallel to the current node as well as the child and the grandchild of the parallel node. That means, 
so this is our reference node when I use following it is going to select both of this node which are parallel to this node and also the child as well as the grandchild of these two node so here I will use slash following so it is going to select the node which are at the same level to our current node as well as the child and the grandchild of the node which are which are at the same level to our current node so as you can see here and here I need to use the input to filter the node type so now we have 8 matching node so again with the help of position function I can select this specific input node position equal to 4 ok so position will be 5 so this is the x path for our element based on the following access view now here you can use one more function that is last so last will calculate the index from the bottom so here I can specify the last so it is going to select the last input node and I'm going to subtract by 3 so it is going to select the fifth that is our required element so same x, x path can be rewritten like this so this is equivalent to last minus 3 so in this manner you can use the following access view to find the x path and here I am going to open the Yahoo web page to find the x path of the element which have a dynamic value for their ID so let us suppose I want to find the x path for this element first I will inspect this element so as you can see here for this element the ID is dynamically generated so I am going to use the combination of following x view as well as the descendant access view to find the x path for this element ok so if I look at here so this is the li tag ok so this this is the li tag which contain our element so first I will go up in the hierarchy to find the node which have the constant value for their attribute because that will act as a reference node for us so here is the node with the id as main so div at the rate id equal to main so if I check for this x path it is able to locate it and again I will do the inspect element so as you can see here all these nodes are the children as well as the grandchildren of the current node so here I can directly use the descendant access view so here I will use slash descendant asterisk so it is going to select all the children as well as the grandchildren of the current node ok now I am going to put a filter based on the node type that is li ok now here I can take the help of position function position equal to 3 so as you can see here it is able to select the required element ok if I specify position as a 2 so it is going to select the second one so this is the x path for our element so as you can see here how easy it is to find the x path of the element by using the following or descendant access view ok so that's all for this video and thanks for watching